Over the past year, I got my highest mileage year in running over 3,000 miles, which allowed me to spend some time in a lot of great shoes. So over the next few weeks, as we turn the page on this year, I'm going to highlight my favorite running shoes across all of the core categories, starting first today with my favorite racing shoe. All right guys, before we get into it today, if you haven't checked out the Running Shoe Matcher tool yet, go to runningshoematcher.com. This is a really cool tool I built for you that matches you with the best shoes for you based on your goals and preferences. So you can go in there, answer five questions about what type of shoe you're looking for, whether you want a daily trainer, a tempo shoe, or a race day shoe, whether you like your shoes soft or firm, and we will match you with the best shoe for you. So it's live right now and it's free. You can check it out at runningshoematcher.com and I'll put a link in the description below. Also, if you prefer to sort through lists of shoes yourself, you can check out the shoe daily database tab of Subwell where we've listed all of the top running shoes and have their specs, price, and all of the great details. All right, let's get into it. So over 2023, I focused mainly on the half marathon distance. 2022, I did a beast of a marathon, Charlotte Marathon, not beast as in my race performance, beast as in the course was a beast and shredded me. So this year, I decided to work on building my aerobic base, extending my training runs, building my overall volume, and getting sharp at that half marathon distance. So in the beginning of the year, I raced the craft beer marathon in Charlotte, came in at around 124, and I used the Adidas Takumi Sen for that race. Now, I wanted something light, fast, and snappy. However, my fitness wasn't exactly where I thought it was, so I ended up paying the price in the later stages of that race, going out too hot in this lower stacked 5k, 10k racer than my fitness could support. So after that, rebuilt my fitness, tackled another half marathon in the summer, Lake Norman half marathon, and used what was my favorite racing shoe up until that point, the Nike Vaporfly 2. Now this secured me a PR of 123.09, and this was a great shoe for that course. It was a really hilly up and down course. This is nice and cushioned but does have enough snap and doesn't feel overly stacked in the forefoot so that when I was going up those uphills, I still felt in control of the shoe. Fast forward to my last race of the year, ended up scoring a 119 PR off of a ton of high volume training. And for that race, I pulled for the Nike Vaporfly Next% 3. Now in my review of the shoe, I mentioned this, but this one actually felt a little bit too stacked in the forefoot. I don't know why it felt so different than the Vaporfly 2 because the stacks are pretty similar, specs are very very similar on paper, but this just felt a little bit more marshmallowy, and I didn't feel as in control of the shoe, but I still was able to score my PR. Now, my favorite race day shoe of the year was none of those shoes I mentioned. It was the shoe that I ran my 2022 Charlotte Marathon in, and that is the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. And the reason I'm picking this shoe out of all of those great race day shoes that I tried in 2023 is because three factors, price, performance, and the mass appeal of this shoe. This is the race day shoe for the masses. This is the shoe that feels the most natural to run in. It can do a variety of paces. It can handle long runs. It can handle training. And at $225, to me, it delivers a value proposition far above what anything else on the market can deliver. In a world where there's not a lot of differentiation among race day shoes, this Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 sets the standard of what a great shoe should be for the everyday recreational runner. Now, Saucony was one of the first brands to pioneer having a rocker on race day shoes, on training shoes, with this speed roll geometry, and they perfected it in this third iteration of the shoe. So what you'll see here is this rocker bottom. It's almost a canoe-like feature where it slopes gently in the back, and then you have a nice aggressive toe-off in the front. So one of the reasons the shoe is so great for a variety of runners and a variety of paces is because of this heel rocker here. So whhereas a lot of shoes like the Nike Vaporfly Next% 2 and 3, you can see here have a very narrow back, the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 has a little bit of a wider base. It extends the rubber further up the back of the heel and has a nice and solid stable landing platform that works well for runners who aren't going to be running sub six minute pace at the later stages of a half marathon or marathon. Because of the way this is set up, it also feels great at training paces, which for me is a must have in a racing shoe that I recommend to other recreational runners. Now I have 20 plus shoes in my closet. I don't run in all of them. Some are retired, but most runners out there are going to have two, three, four, five shoes max. And if we're spending 200 plus dollars on a race day shoe, it should be able to handle training paces without breaking down and also with feeling good at those everyday aerobic paces. 
So this has about 250 miles on it. The rubber coverage is still great. I haven't worn through down into the foam yet and the performance of the foam still feels really good. I actually have another pair of these in my closet and if we do the little bend test here, you can see that the plate is still super stiff. Sorry for anybody who's triggered by my bending here, but the shoe has not degraded in performance at all. It might've lost maybe two to 3% of its pop, but I don't know even if that, I ran a 23 mile long run in these a few weeks ago and it felt absolutely fantastic still. Now there are a few downsides to the shoe, which I wanted to highlight, even though it is an awesome all around shoe. So first is the back here. It's not super padded around the back of this heel collar and it can feel a little bit diggy into the Achilles. I just wear a padded features or a padded OS first sock and have no issues with it. But I know some runners like to go sockless or don't have padded socks or just have issues with rubbing. So that could be a factor up here in the Achilles. It wasn't for me, but for some runners it might. And if we're gonna compare against a shoe like the Nike Vaporfly next percent and three, you will see in here there's a super padded heel collar around the back. The second downside of the shoe, but the reason why I picked it as my favorite shoe is because it's not the fastest out there. So if you compare it to a shoe like the Takumi Sen, this thing is the fastest shoe in my rotation. It feels great at those sub six minute paces, but it's not friendly for training. This is very friendly for training, but there is a little bit of a penalty making it not a great shoe for a 10K or 5K for runners who are going to be running those sub six minute paces. However, if you are a runner ripping off those sub six minute paces, you probably are an enthusiast like me who runs a lot of miles per week and can justify having a more specialized shoe. So I don't knock it too much for not being a great super fast shoe. Now, the last downside I want to mention is that it is not the widest platform in the midfoot and the forefoot. So whereas the foam itself is more stable and has a little bit of a wider base, if we compare the toe box even to something like the Nike Vaporfly Next% 3, you'll see that the toe box in the Nike is a little bit wider than we have in the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. So you can compare for yourself here and I will pull out the ruler. So for any wider footed runners out there, you might have a little bit of trouble with the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 up in the forefoot. For me, I do get some pinching around the outside of this left area here. So that is something to watch out for if you are a wide footed runner. I believe New Balance makes the SC Elite V3 in a dedicated wide last, and that's also a shoe that's very friendly for training paces. So I would look to the New Balance if this one is going to be too narrow for you. So that's why I believe the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 is the best race day shoe on the market right now. It's gonna work the best for most runners. It's a highly durable platform and it feels great at a variety of paces, including for training. So if you're interested in buying the shoe, I'll put my link in the description below. However, we do know the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 is coming out later next year. So if you can hold off a little bit to add a new shoe, you might wanna wait because this one will drop in price as we get into the spring and summer months of 2024. All right, guys, there you have it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing, and I'll be back tomorrow with another video.